Can I help you? Gavin, mute. <laughs> okay, guys. So um, thank you so much for hopping on tonight. As always, I know that this is time away from your family, from other things that you could be doing. And we just are always appreciative of you taking the time out to grow your business and to be present. I need a page to color. You're going down. He's fired. My assistant <laughs> is fired. The system is simple, but apparently a little too back onto this cocoa chat, buddy. <laughs> oh my goodness. You're kicked off. Oh, okay. Come on. Okay. You guys, so again, we're super thankful that you're here um, to just take the time to grow your business. Um, we have some amazing people going to share tonight, and I am super excited. I've got my notepad ready. So does Gavin, apparently. And we're going to be taking some notes. So um, I'm actually just going to turn it over. So Carly, I am so excited um, for you to just pop on and just share what you have on your heart, what you'd like to share with the team. You guys, Carly is amazing. You all, we all know this, right? Um, she got started, what was it? Is it, are we at eight, nine months now? I can't even remember. What are we at, Carly? You know, I forget it was April. So however long ago that was. <laughs> what up? What up that? Yes, and you guys, what, what she's been able to do along with her team has just been absolutely incredible. She is a very fiery leader. She leads with heart. She leads with truth, boldness, with integrity. She is awesome. Um, she has quickly become one of my great, great friends, um, Auntie Carly. You know, she's, it's so funny. Like, I've watched her kids, like, grow up over the last several months. She's watched Mila do the same, and um, it's just an honor to work with her. So, Carly, I'm going to mute out, and I'm going to pass it over to you, and I'm excited to take some notes. Yeah, I feel like uh, Mila's aunt, the kind that always cheers on the naughty thing she does, because when she gets on and she's on, you're like, oh, I love her. So I'm that aunt, you know, you know. Anyway, you guys, I'm really excited to get on here today. Um, I, I'm going to do very little talking, actually. Um, I have four of my girls that are going to hop on, or they're in my team, whether they're personally to me or just on my team. All of these ladies will be ambassadors, like without a doubt. They are amazing. So you're going to want to take notes, because I promise you, like these girls are just like pure fire, pure inspiration. Um, <laughs> but you know what? Here's the thing. We're getting ready to step into 2020 and what we have in front of us, you guys, so many of you have the potential to be ambassadors here. So many of you have the potential, if that's what you want, right? Not everybody wants it, but if that's what you want, so many of you have the potential to go for huge things as we step into this year where a company hits momentum. Like, do you guys know how huge that is? It is exciting. And so what I want to do is I want you guys, I want you guys to be dreaming and thinking and just like get to this place where like you're envisioning yourself as that leader that's going to be on here talking. Some of us talk all the time. Like I could just talk forever. Some of you are shy. You're a little bit like, hmm, I don't know if I'm ready for that. But I want you to envision that because as you step into your role as a leader and every single one of you on here has leadership potential, right? I want you to envision. So I'm going to tell you the question that I ask these girls. And um, they're going to go ahead and they're going to share theirs. But the question that I asked each one of them, as you know, it was like they were willing to share, <laughs> was like, what is, has inspired you? What inspires you? What motivates you right now as we're getting into 2020? And what was so cool is that the heart and the answer that came back with, the, with what they had to say was so in sync with each other. And each one of these people, I, they just had a calmness and a peace and an abundance mentality. Um, each one of these ladies are ready to hustle and make things happen. But at the same time, um, each one of them is doing it from like the right mindset. And that's so powerful. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to introduce the first person. You guys, Tina is amazing. She is a dear friend of mine. Um, I've known her for a couple of years in the industry. Always wanted to work with her. And um, it just never quite aligned. And when I came here, she's like, um, this is it. This is the place we get to work together. So this girl has got a fiery spirit too. We all do. We just attract a lot of fiery people. Um, <laughs> but this, this girl has a fiery spirit. She's just full of energy. Like when you have this idea of your head of like this, you know, network marketer, I mean, she just fits the bill because she's just got that contagious energy to her. So Tina, I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to you. Thanks for all of that, Carly. You are absolutely amazing. I just 
adore you. Just adore you. So, well, listen, we're just going to kind of jump right into this whole 2020 thing. I am super stoked for this year and I know all of you are too. And, um, let's, let's just, let's just do one thing before we get going. Anything, anything, anything of the past is there. Do not pick it back up. It is not in your carry on bag. It is not meant to go forward with you. It's meant to stay there. So from this minute forward, we're going forward. Okay. That's what I had. All right. So here, here we are. <laughs> we're just going to jump in. All right. So let's talk about, let's talk about um, habits and let's talk about consistency. Hmm. Yeah. Two great things that I need to work on. <laughs> But anywho, so what I what I wanted to share with is that um, I've had a couple great leaders in this industry, and I can only, I can really honestly say a couple, and um, one of them um, was just absolutely just a doll, and um, she was in my last my last business, and uh, she had all of us do um, this habit, this consistent habit for 30 days and y'all can go look it up because it was just stinking fantastic but um she had us all watch uh the strangest secret by earl nightingale and um i'm sure you all have have heard of this like i just i just can't imagine that you haven't but anywho so um it's called the strangest secret and it's by earl nightingale and this is that 30 day habit and so basically what she had us do was watch this whole thing. I think it's like 30 minutes ish. So we, we watched this whole thing one time a day, every single day for 30 days. And if we missed a day, check it out. You have to start over. I'm telling you what it took me. I honestly don't remember, but I, I think it took me seven times. I'm not kidding. I think it took me seven times to get through those 30 days, but here, but herein lies the key. And yeah, it's totally old, old school, but herein lies the key is it was just doing that one thing one time a day for those 30 days. So I would do it for say like eight days and I'm like, Oh snap, I missed it. Oh my gosh, I got to start over. So then I had to start right back over and start recounting one, two, three. And there was one time that I got to day 29 and I missed it. I had to start completely over. So I did, but don't you know, don't you know that that very next time, that very last time that I did this, <laughs> I did not miss one day. I did not miss one day. So all of, all of that to say is just start by doing one thing. Just start by doing one thing. Maybe that one thing is getting up 30 minutes earlier and being consistent and doing that, you know, um, every single day for five days, or maybe your thing is okay, but I can get up a half an hour earlier, four days, four days a week, then do that. But whatever your thing is, do that. I've already started new habits this year. I just, I just, I like new weeks. I like new months. I like new years. So I kind of like that whole, you know, jumpstart thing, but anywho. So, um, so anyway, me and Carly were talking earlier and you know what? She, she was the one that really said, when we, when we do these things consistently, it really is how we win, but it's just not winning. It actually changes our lives. So, so, so yes, this is fantastic for business, but don't, don't think of this, um, as just changing your own life. I mean, that one thing or that two things that you can do consistently on a daily basis is going to not just change your life, but it's going to change the other lives around you. And that's what we're here for. That is exactly what we're here for. We are not here just for us. We are here for the masses. And our, our job, your job right there in your world, your job is to change lives of the masses. So you can do what you can do. And what that is, is doing that one thing, that two thing consistently, day after day, moment after moment, week after week, month after month. And then at the, and then I, I always hear this because it's, because it's just so true, but I, I always hear this. Then at the end of that year, just like Ricky says, you're not going to recognize your life. 
you're not going to recognize your life. So let's start our year off with the bang and let's start our month off with a bang and let's pick those one things, those three things that we're going to stay consistent and that we're going to um, not falter in. So there you go, you guys run with that. Okay, you guys, is she not amazing? Like, do we not need to hear more from Tina? I'm always saying that. I'm like, you're going to feel that about all these girls that you're not hearing a lot from. I'm like, come on, <laughs> share your wisdom with us because you are brilliant. I love that because, um, you know, I think that there's so much wisdom in what you're saying. There's a book that I'm sure a lot of you have read called The Compound Effect. And it talks about how doing those little things every day is how you end up winning at the end. That book really profoundly changed how I looked at habits. Um, you know, for example, what if you really did add five people to your cup of happy every day? What if you really did? That one consistent thing. It's probably easier to do that than to listen to a 30 minute old school video. You know what I'm saying? But if, you know, if you could do that, you can, you can add five people to your cup of happy or show up on coffee chat. You know what I mean? To make that commitment to do that on a regular basis, which you guys, I've been sleeping in lately, so if you haven't seen me, that's fine. <laughs> Somebody needs to slap my hand. <laughs> Most of well, I know it. <laughs> so anyway, um, thank you so much, Tina. You know I love you to death, and you just offered us so much wisdom there. Um, okay, so next, we have my friend Sarah McMullen. You guys are in for a treat. This girl is just wisdom and fire all wrapped into one, and then ties everything up in a beautiful bow. You know, I cannot say enough about her, and so rather than go on for like an hour, because I could... I'm just gonna go ahead and pass it over to her. Well, thank you for having me on tonight. What a privilege to share alongside of these amazing gals. Um, you know, the, it's so interesting that the timing to talk on the call tonight was, it, it really coincided with some huge aha moments that I've had in my personal journey um, as early as this morning, just as I'm putting everything together and so, before I start, like, here's the deal. Um, like everyone's saying, 2020 is going to be incredible. I just, you know, the ripple effect that's happening, um, an absolute life-changing shift, I believe, is really in store for people with this company going into this year. Um, and no doubt we have, you guys, such an incredible opportunity in our hands. And I think it's important to realize what we have in our hands. Because in realizing that gift that we have to offer people will determine the, le the level we go as far as our vision, um, how we elevate our vision up to match um, our destiny run that we're going to do this year, right? Um, we have, you know, the simplicity. We have the proprietary product line. We have the culture. You know, we have the comp plan and the simple system and the timing. And the thing is, you guys, is that this time, the time to be the pioneers for this company and bring it, be the first to bring it to market won't happen again. You know, we are building a huge, tremendously strong foundation with what we have, um, but a, we have a really, really special moment in our hands to really run with it. But that's actually not what I want to talk to you about tonight. What I want to talk to you guys about is the term or the phrase the fear of getting left behind. And, you know, I, this is a term that really struck my spirit. How many times have you guys heard this said over and over and over again, right? The fear of getting left behind or FOMO, you know, people use it a lot of the times as a motivator. Like you, you hear that term probably thrown around social media, especially in our realm. But this is something that I struggle with. You know, I know what we have in our hands. I've been in the industry for 16 years. I know what we have in our hands. I know how rare it is, but there are still those moments where that feeling in my stomach comes and that anxiousness of, am I doing enough? Am I going to get to the end of the year and be proud of what I've done? What I, what, you know, the skin in the game. And the thing is, is that when I was really simmering on that term today. And I was actually talking to one of my gals about this um, and that fear she was feeling of the train leaving the station without her. I want to like zero in on that phrase because fear is part of that phrase. And the reality is, is that fear, anything motivated by fear is going to be bondage to your business. And so I just want to go back to even what you know, Tina said about coming into this year with breaking off those things that weighed you down in 2019. 
I know for me, fear has been something that I have had to physically, like not physically, but you know what I mean? Like very intentionally break off of my business and off of how I function as a person. It's something that's tried to really keep me down through my life. So whether that's fear of, you know, failure, fear of being left behind, fear of what people are going to think of me, fear of not being adequate enough, fear of not being worthy enough. Do you know what I mean? So in this, this term, fear of getting left behind, I had one of my girls bring up, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, this is something I've been struggling with too. Here's the, here's the, the aha moment is if we know that fear equals bondage, and you're coming into the year with that kind of FOMO mentality. I got to like that anxious, that like not very centered, not peace driven feeling. This urge to run is good. We have a fire. We need a fire. We have what we have in our hands is special. But when action is motivated, motivated by fear, you guys, it will lead to anxiety. It's going to lead to burnout. It's going to lead to inauthentic movement forward meaning that you're grasping at anything and everything because you just want it. You got to like do the thing, right? And then you like stop and you find yourself lost and without peace. And so what I'm not saying, I know this is a different kind of talk right now. Like I know I'm not coming with like, you know, all the guns a blazing with the 2020 movement, but I am in a way I'm just coming with you guys with a conviction I'm having in my spirit that hopefully you guys can glean something from which is that in order to posture yourself for the destiny call on your life, don't approach your goals with fear-based mentality. Come at it with abundance. Um, fear is the death of destiny. There's a difference between taking daily focused, consistent action driven by purpose and vision and being pulled by the spirit of fear. Driven, you're in control. Pulled, you're not. Pulled, you're going to and fro, right? And so in closing with this, how can you leverage this time that we have with this company, knowing what we have in our hands, knowing what 2020 is going to bring? We're going to cut off all the stuff that was not serving us and leave it in 2019. We're moving forward. How can you keep a gauge so that you can stay rooted and planted in truth as you journey forward? Number one is you have to have vision. You have to have the dream. You have to know where you're headed. It's like, you know, I use the, like the analogy. I know I've said this probably before on calls, but with, with the ship, right? When a ship sets sail and they head into the waters, they set a coordinates. They know where they're headed. If they don't, they enter the waters and they are tossed to and fro by the waves. And it's very unlikely that they will end up at their destination. If you have a concrete, solid why and vision that is pulling you forward and it's going to be small and some are going to be big and it's going to be made up all of these different things, write it down and keep yourself focused on what is moving you towards your destiny call this year. The second thing is consistent, daily, intentional action. That can be supercharged. If you guys are running for goals, supercharge your efforts up. Um, and give yourself permission to do that and do it consistently. Give yourself, a lot of us are doing a 90 day run. Do it consistently. Give yourself that time to um, be very intentional with the goals that you have in front of you. And when you feel that feeling coming on, that FOMO, the fear of missing out, the fear of am I doing enough? Am I a good enough leader? Am I doing this? This person's doing this quicker than me and all of those things. I want you to go back to your vision, right? Because you're being led by your vision. And are you doing the daily consistent activity that's going to be, at, even though it's mundane, even though sometimes it feels like sending out the birthdays and showing up online and checking in with team and customers and follow-ups doesn't feel sufficient for that huge burdening goal and vision you have on your life that you know that you're why you're doing this why you clicked your button right why you became an entrepreneur in the first place when when you can look and you can see does my daily action truly match my vision then i want you to rest and i want you to find your peace and i want you to know that you're exactly where you should be for such a time as this so that's all i have Wow. <laughs>
<laughs> what more can we say about, oh my goodness, um, way to deliver some power. That was amazing. And you know, here's the thing, when we, um, people can feel our vibe. So if we're coming from this place where we're not, um, like we're, we're fear led, that's what's going to come off is our fear. So if we are just resting in what we've got here and we're doing what we know to do and then we surrender it, right? What's going to come across to the people watching us is going to be an energy of peace and an energy that's going to draw them in and attract them. So what she said, you guys, like I literally have like too many goosebumps to even talk straight. <laughs> so Sarah, that was amazing. Absolutely amazing. So, um, okay. So Anna is next, you guys. Anna is just such, I mean, she, she is such an incredible leader. She is one of the pioneers for a Spanish team that we have going. She is just, I mean, blazing trails ahead. I cannot wait for you guys to hear a little bit more from her, you guys. She's very um, heart-led, and she's just an inspiration to me on a daily basis, so I cannot wait for her to share with you. Thank you, Carly. Hello, everyone. Okay, so this is going to sound funny, but it's true. Okay, first of all, when we were invited to this call, and it, I have to share this. Like, I am not going to have anything in order, first of all. I'm just going to be very honest. Um, <laughs> I don't have anything in order, and I'm probably going to be all over the place, but I promise you guys that I am going to try to speak from the heart. But it's funny because I was taking notes as Sarah was talking, and amazing information you share with us, Tina, as well. I had to stop taking notes because literally everything she touched on, I have on my notes. I have chills. I'm shaking because Carly said something earlier. It's like something is happening in the team. Something is happening here. And I truly believe it. And, and I'm just going to tell you guys from where, from what, where I'm coming from. Okay. So something that I was sharing with, um, with Carly and some of the leaders is that for the past, I wanted to say two to three, my ego wanted to say th two to three weeks. That's what my ego wanted to say, because that's when I got sick. I got sick. Um, the day before Christmas, I, I got the flu. So I stayed in bed and I didn't mind. <laughs> I didn't mind. That was like my Christmas present. Yeah, you get sick and you get to stay in bed all day. But um, my ego wanted to say that I, I've been feeling bad for the past two to three weeks. But honestly, it's been the past two to three months. And it's been like a, a boxing ring mentally. And I don't know if anybody is going to relate to this. Um, I just feel like I have to share it. And um, spiritually, it was like mentally and spiritually, it was really, really hard because I always consider myself a um, person that has this really, really strong mindset. I'm like the kind of person that can probably run. Like I, I, when I grew up, I, was, uh, I did track in high school. And every time somebody told me that I couldn't do more, I would always push myself more just to prove to myself that I was really, really strong mentally, not physically, because I knew that physically, I, yeah, <laughs> but mentally I, I could. And so um, the past two to three months has been like that. It has been really, really hard, um, especially because uh, at the end of January, I came to the end of my, I don't know if anybody ever did a five-year plan five years ago, <laughs> or you're on your third year, on your second year, fourth year, I don't know, maybe your 10th year from your five-year plan. Well, it was my five-year plan from the beginning when I started network marketing. And honestly, I felt very defeated. I felt like uh, I wasn't where I, where I had planned to be. And, um, you know, those thoughts went into my mind and the devil ran with them and he set up camp in my mind. And as much as I talked to Bobby Joe, and I feel so bad because <laughs> poor Bobby Joe, <laughs> Bobby Joe, <laughs> I'm praying for you. I see you as a triple crown, definitely. Um, she put up with me uh, highs and lows and I just love her because she never made me feel like I was not, made for this she always made me feel like this was for me and, and now I truly believe it um but while I was this was going on in the past two or three months and I know a lot of people like because I heard conversations I've actually gotten on conversations and coffee chats and and I'm talking from the heart and I'm just being transparent I'm I don't want to say I'm white and black because I'm trying to get away from that mentality as well but I will tell you guys what I what I believe. I will tell you guys how I see things. And I do believe that together, and I had to write this word because this word has been like on my mind constantly. Collective mind 
I don't know if you guys understand the word collective mind as a collective mind, as a group, as a company, as a team, um, whatever one person thinks, it pretty much is like it runs, you know, and it transfers to everybody. And so in the past few weeks, I've been getting on the coffee chat and I've heard some things and I kind of just kind of jumped off because I am like, I am really trying to stay focused and I'm really trying to, to motivate myself so that I can give to my team, you know, and to those people that I serve. And so, um, because I was not where I wanted to be, it was really, really hard. I felt, I felt really bad and I felt really lost. And, um, and I started like, telling myself all these things like maybe it is true you know maybe what this industry has taught me in the past five years that I am not meant to be a leader unless I dress like a leader I talk like a leader I walk like a leader I drive the car a leader le uh, drives maybe this is not for me and you know that started happening through my mind and it was really really hard because um that's not true <laughs> it was really hard I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where you're being loved so much that you kind of used to be loved because you're just not used to that. And so here I am in a levosity with amazing leaders, amazing women, amazing team that are constantly loving on me. And it was like a battle, you know, from what I've been conditioned because that's what it feels like for the past five years. I was conditioned to think that I had to be this Miss Perfect person. And I come from a company like not the one previous to this one, but my first company, I was there for three years. And I was the, uh, I was in a leadership, I guess, environment that if you didn't wear a suit, you didn't wear heels. And if you didn't have your hair perfect and your nails done, you weren't going to be applause and you weren't going to be considered successful. And you were going to be considered like you were not pretty much perfect and not somebody that people could look up to. And that has been really hard, you know? And so they preached, they preached family, they preached leadership, they preach excellence. And so here I am in a company where constantly I hear the word, we are family. And it kind of crashed. I constantly crashed against that word because of what I've been conditioned. So, <coughs> sorry. Um, with, with that said, like, I, I'm just trying to keep this as short as possible. Um, all of this, you know, all this battle in my mind brought me to, to the conclusion because I had to pray and I had to, I, I prayed a lot. I prayed a lot. And when I prayed at the beginning of December, it was like, it almost felt like, oh, we're done. You know, it's over. Like the bad thing is over. And now from here and on, it's all going to be nice butterflies and rainbows and unicorns and all of this stuff. But it wasn't enough. I, like, it's almost like God wanted to press this reset button in my mind. He wanted to press this reset my button on my energy and on where I was going because I was, like I said, at the end of the year, I felt really bad that I wasn't where I had planned that I wanted to be. And I learned that when you let go, when, cause I had to let go, I had to let go cause uh, I am a people pleaser. I'm a recovering people pleaser. I'm a recovering, um, uh, I don't know, like you just have to make everybody happy and you have to create content that makes everybody happy and you just have to seem Miss Perfect and it's horrible. <laughs> it was really bad. And so I was this person and I just had to let go of everything. You know, I had to let go of being perfect. I had to let go of having the nice polish. Um, and I'm still struggling with that, but uh, post and all of this stuff, you know, but when I let go, I remember that week that I let go is like the week following week I, I got sick and it was almost like I let go and I get sick. And I don't know if you guys ever prayed for broken chains, like, you know, we're breaking chains and something that Sarah said, you know, like fear. And, and the reason I'm sharing this is because this morning I got into the coffee chat. If you guys didn't get into the coffee chat or if you did, same thing that Sarah shared, Hillary shared this morning. Somebody was talking about situations that there was going in their business. And then she brought up that fear only means that it's like <laughs> the fear of losing. It's almost like sometimes people protect their goals. And I remember um, Bobby Joe asked me, so what is your goal for the beginning of the year? And being very transparent, guys, I was scared to say that I had a goal because I was scared of losing. I was scared of not meeting my goal. I was scared that if I put a goal and I didn't reach it, I was going to get hurt again. And so I had to let go of all of those things. And, um, but 
like I said, I was in a very dark place and I felt like I wasn't good enough and I felt like I wasn't putting in enough hours and maybe I wasn't doing the right content and maybe I wasn't connecting with the people the right, the right way. And I had to stop. You know, I had to stop and I kind of closed down and I know <laughs> leaders reached out to me. They're like pretty much like loving on me, loving on me. And I'm like repelling it, like, stop, stop, stop. Like I'm too ashamed. And this is something like today was the first time that I've actually shared that. I, I was too ashamed. I was too ashamed because I felt like I wasn't good enough, but it wasn't that. It wasn't version two. It wasn't version one. It was, it was in version three. It was just that it was almost like I, I had to break away from all of those chains and things that were planted in my mind because what God really wanted to do in my life was give me bigger, give me better. Yeah, I am not where I wanted to be in five years. Why? Because that is not what he wants for me. That is not as much as I can accomplish here. I can accomplish so much more. And I have learned that the possibilities are endless. Here they are. And here for the first time, I feel like in so long, that it feels weird <laughs> and I'm still getting used to the, the, the feeling of being, that it's okay to be myself, that it's okay to not be perfect, that it's okay to, um, that it's okay to um, not be embarrassed for my, you know, whatever way that I show up. I feel like for the first time that I can walk in anywhere, go everywhere show up on a Facebook live, show up on my stories, just the way that I am. And I am not going to be ashamed. I am not going to be shamed. That's the word. I'm not going to be judged. I'm not going to be pointed. And that feeling gives me freedom. That feeling has been able to help me start 2020 as myself for the first time, 100% completely like myself. And so the message that I have for you guys is this super short. God will give you anything, anything you want if you prepare yourself for it. You have to prepare yourself in body, mind, and spirit. And it's so funny when I was writing this down because these three words is something that every time we talk to Carly, she always mentions those words. Anytime she does a live, I've always hear her mention those words, body, mind, and spirit. And you have to prepare also the physical, the non-physical, and your actions. You have to think about those things. And together, yeah, we're here, 98 people. As a collective mind, we can change everything. We are the ones. We are the fire. Anybody that didn't connect to this call tonight is watching. They're watching us. And I was away from the fire. I was watching the fire burn. And in my mind, my ego my disrespect wouldn't let me get close to the fire because I was right and the leaders were wrong. That's how it was a few months ago, guys. <laughs> so as a collective mind, we have to get near the fire. We need to look at who is in the fire, who's burning, who's running, who's posting, who's excited, who's motivated. I have a girl in our team. I'm pretty sure she's on here. Her name is Fiorella. You guys probably have heard of her in, um, in our calls in the mornings. She is fire right now in our team and we're so close to her because she has, and I told her like she, cause she prayed guys. She prayed October, November to see if she would join this business. She joined like at the end of November, December. And I couldn't understand, you know, <laughs> we have a great opportunity. Why are you not going to join sooner? You know, but it's amazing how God works because it was meant for her to come in now, not before. God had a plan with our team that she was going to come in now and she was going to continue to blow air on this fire so that we can continue to grow it and just, you know, expand it. So as a collective mind, I want to invite everybody to get near this fire and put air, you know, put energy, put more wood into this fire because all of those people that are out there looking, as soon as they get close to this fire, they're going to get contagious. They're going to get, I don't know what's the right word in English. Semana contaminar. If somebody can translate that in the messages, that's going to be amazing. Contaminated. Like they're going to, they're going to feel it contaminated. Yes. They're going to, yeah, they're going to get contaminated by the excitement, by the fire, by all the vision. Okay. So something you have to ask yourself, and I had to ask myself this, and it was really hard, guys. <laughs> it was really hard. All right. Um, how are you showing up? 
because you have to prepare your vessel you know we have to prepare ourselves to accept we can't just be like go out there give out samples and hey, they're gonna come our way you have to prepare yourself you have to prepare your vessel and the way that you prepare your vessel is that you you have to ask yourself how are you showing up you know and are you persistent are you really persistent because yeah i send out the sample uh, two weeks later i did the follow-up i didn't add them to the to the to the your cup of happy how persistent are you are you really following the system and how bad do you really want it like how bad do you really want it i have for the first time in five years i have set a set goal of what a financial plan really means i had no idea what that was um i just knew that i wanted to make money and be debt free but for the first time in five years i learned about how to have a financial plan and how i'm gonna use this business to pay off all of my debt, okay? So how bad do you want it? <clears throat> you have to find those whys. And are you consistent? How consistent are you? Because the people out there that are watching the fire, the little, because they see in their eyes, they see this little fire because they're so, so far away from the fire that this is what they see. But the closer you get, you realize that this fire is actually pretty big, okay? So when you are consistent, People that are watching you, they're like, they know that you're serious. If you're not consistent, people won't take you serious. They just won't. You know, it doesn't matter if the product does miracles. It doesn't matter if, I know we can't do any medical claims. It doesn't matter, you know, what people say that it does. But if you're not consistent, nothing, you know, it doesn't matter. And the last one, to prepare your vessel, you have to, you have to have respect. And you have to ask yourself if ego is didn't, dominating you and when i say ego we're not talking about the kind of ego that says oh look at me i am so powerful i am a top leader i'm a top recruiter we're not talking about that kind of ego we're talking about the ego that lets you live in a world that it does not revolve around you you know and as a collective mind we have to get rid of that ego <laughs> we have to work with it so are you and then the other thing is that that's just to prepare your vessel are you really out there um, without expectation? And this is the one thing that I, I, I remember I spoke to Carly and the girls about this about two, three weeks ago, is that I had to let go of expectations. And I know that there are some leaders that are really, really amazing and are having so much success. And they say that you should always expect, you know, you should always expect that you're going to have an amazing day. And though, that is true. But when you work, <coughs> when you work out of a mindset of abundance, you really are not working as, ooh, a new lead. Ah, she's going to buy product. Ooh, a new lead. Ooh, she's, I'm going to get her on this product. No, you have to work from a point of view of service. You have to really eliminate the expectations so that you can open up your vessel <coughs> to receive. You know, in order for you to receive, you have to give first. So you have to work with no expectations of the outcome because that's the way that you work out of an abundance mindset. Because you have to understand this. There is enough for everybody. There is enough for everybody, guys. Like, there really is. And so whatever happened two, three months ago, I'm going to say two, three months ago, um, I personally, this is my, my, my thought, and maybe I'm wrong. You know, maybe I'm wrong. But I came into this business like fire. Never in my five years have I ever been able to accumulate the number of customers that I accumulated on my first month. I was like... I was on a roll and I was like, my ego was to the top and I'm like the bomb and like, this is it, you know? And then <laughs> things happen, you know, things happen. And so I started to live with the expectation that I should have this many customers on Christmas, but let's be real. <laughs> Christmas, everybody's spending money. And yes, people will spend money. If you get on the right frequency, people will spend money and people will buy the product. People will continue to buy all that stuff. But if you are in a mindset if you are operating in a mindset of scarcity is that how you say it scarcity scarcity my husband always has to correct me with this word scarcity nothing happens people can feel that people are really smart they can feel your energy they can feel that you are desperate you know and so i felt like i felt into that mindset for october november december beginning of december but um so that's what happened with me. I'm not saying this is what happened with people, but this is what happened with me. So I just want to remind you guys, <coughs> you have to 
the same way you res you have to have respect and you have to dominate that you don't let ego dominate you you also have to respect how you what you give you know respect your time and how do you manage giving love and giving um how do you manage your money as well? And yeah, this is not a call about financial and all that stuff, but you, when you prepare your vessel, you don't only prepare one side, you have to prepare it all. And as a collective mind, we can all push ourselves there. We can all learn a little bit from Melissa, a little bit from Carly, a little bit from Tina, a little bit from Sarah, a little bit from Bobby Joe. We can learn a little bit from everybody, from Enrique. You know, <coughs> as a collective mind, we can all elevate each other. And it's so funny, you know, or a company name is called Elevate. But um, so that's, that's all I have. And I just have to stop talking because either way, I'm just going to keep going. But uh, I, hope, I hope this helps somebody. Um, and I just want to invite you guys, like as a collective mind, we can do amazing things. And um, it wasn't the product, guys. That's just my final message. It was not, the, it was in version two, it was in version three. It was just that whatever happened, had, I feel like it had to break chains of a limited mindset that's what I feel because what we have right now and it's not like is this is not um what's the word this is not a hype I, I don't do hype I hate hype I don't like hype at all we really have something that sells itself we have something that nobody else has and I am telling you because constantly I am bombarded by other leaders in the industry that want me to join their business and I'm always open to learn what they're doing to see if they would ever join me, you know, but there's nothing out there like what we have. And so if as a collective mind, we can all get on this frequency and we can all get on this belief, believe me, you can do amazing things. Thank you, ladies. Wow, that was so powerful. I love your transparency because I think so many of us can relate, whether it's to expectations that we have or maybe this feeling that we have to perform and how beautiful it is that we're at a place where we don't, where we're accepted just as we are right no matter what you guys were talking she was talking about nails and i'm like look at how many of mine are missing because i've been tearing them off all day <laughs> like like really like it's okay <laughs> but, but anyway like that was so inspirational and never question like like the fire that you bring because i am just moved by what you shared all right you guys so next like how can we have like massive inspirational pep talk and not have bobby joe on here <laughs> you know what i mean like you know, the girl just brings it home every time. Like she just, she speaks to me. And even though like, you know, I brought Bobby Joe on all the time. Like she's, she's the girl. I'm like, I need some entrepreneurial advice. Like please help. You know, she's just got that wisdom and that understanding of the industry. And then on top of that, she just, she understands what we have here. She understands to inspire. The girl is solid. So I cannot wait for her to go ahead and share what she's got tonight. Thank you. Can you guys hear me okay? Okay, first of all, Tina, Sarah, and Anna, like, can we just like turn it down? Like, I'm good. We don't, I don't even have to say anything. Like, y'all are amazing. I have so many notes. Um, and you guys, truthfully, like, let me just start out saying I needed that. Like, every single thing that y'all said, I needed it. Because here's the thing. So, how many of you guys just by a raise of hands or maybe comment in the comment section had in a mediocre or a really crappy 2019. I'll be the first person to say I did, right? Like you had some trials, you, you went through some things and you vowed that 2020 wasn't going to look the same, right? And you, you have this picture, this vision, like what Sarah was saying in your head of how you're going to transform into 2020. And the truth is you guys, resolutions are cheap. And I'm just going to say that resolutions are cheap. Resilience is priceless. But in order to be resilient, you have to stand up to what you want to overcome. And standing up to what you want to overcome does not feel good. When you're breaking chains and when you're, you know, ending um, generational curses and when you're doing things different than, you know, what you've been taught your whole life or when you wanna overcome something that maybe you've battled in this industry. I mean, I've been through some garbage, y'all. And I didn't wanna bring it with me into 2020 because I wanted it to look different. I want my 2020 to look zero like 2019. Like I want it to be a complete 180. 
But in order for me to go through that, I have to be resilient. In order for me to accomplish that, I have to be resilient. And sometimes being resilient really sucks. Can I just be honest? Sometimes being resilient doesn't feel good. Sometimes you're going to go through moments of, am I doing enough? Am I enough? Am I showing up enough? Am I loving enough? Am I posting enough? Am I doing enough stuff, right? Am I going to accomplish that? So I'm just going to be really real with you guys and transparent because I don't know how to do anything else. But a couple days ago, um, I was talking to Nancy um, about her mom and her parents moving into this new place. And I was, I was just like listening to her. I personally messaged her, you know, telling her congratulations because it's super beautiful and so powerful. And it just really, like, I actually wrote it down one of the days as one of the things that I'm grateful for on my calendar. It says Nancy's blessings on my calendar is one of the things that I'm grateful for for that day because it really inspired me. And I messaged her and she said, you know, you're talking about it. And she goes, what are you dreaming this year? And you guys, I told her I'm not. I told her I'm not. I said, I have my vision board, but those are goals. Those are things that I want to accomplish because I have been beat down so much in this industry that I don't want to dream because I've been let down so much that my dream of, you know, making $50,000 a month, I don't believe in that anymore. Do I want it? Yeah. Do I think it's going to happen? That's just me being transparent, right? Because I set those goals before I set those dreams before and they were utterly shattered. And I had to go through a lot of things of being broken and being beat down in order for me to look at dreaming differently. So can I just, can I just share with you guys, there's a difference between setting a goal and having a dream. Okay. A goal is something that you want obviously a dream is something you want to accomplish too right but a goal is something that you're like okay you're giving it maybe a deadline like for example you guys i would like to buy a new couch by the end of the year because i want a new couch because my daughter jumps on mine that's a whole nother story but i want a new couch and so i can set a financial goal in order to achieve me getting a new couch right i can set up a financial plan in order for me to pay off debt in order to have you know, to, to gain uh, financial freedom. I can set up a um, spiritual goal by tuning into maybe some worship and a devotional in order to grow in a spiritual sense, right? But what I can't do is I can't set a goal of $50,000 a month if that's your goal and expect that to happen because my plan then is just to help a lot of people, right? But if I don't go after helping a lot of people and that's my goal, my dream will never come true. Does that make sense? So your big dream, like what do you dream of? And you guys, I'm just being honest. I don't have a dream yet. I don't, I, I just don't have a dream yet because I'm not sure where to start to make that something that's going to make me feel good without having to deal with that pain that comes with that for me, right? But my goal is that if I show up every day and I love people hard and I tell them that I'm your friend and I'm your friend first, business, products, all of that to the side, and I love you hard, then I know that that action is going to help heal me so that I can dream again. Does that make sense? My goal is to serve. My goal is to not operate in fear. Thank you, Sarah, because I needed that word tonight. My goal is to look at all the areas of my vessel. Thank you, Anna, for that, because there are areas that I needed to work on, right? And first of all, if you are not serving people first, I ask you to stop in your tracks. And the, the golden rule, like treat other people the way that you'd want to be treated, like I live by that. It's literally written on my arm. 
a, a verse by Dr. Martin Luther King because I want it as a reminder every day that if I serve first, if I'm consistent in those actions, if I follow the income producing activity chart, if I do the things that I need to do every day, you guys, dang it, you are enough. And when you put your head on your pillow at night and you don't feel like you're enough, I want you to ask yourself why you feel that way. Is it because somebody made you feel that way? Let me tell you really quick, there's a delete and block button and you are free to use it. And, it, and if it's you, if it's you making you feel that way, you need to delete and block that, ter that, that verbiage going on in your head because you have the freedom to do it just the same, okay? Um, if you are, you know, doing the things every day is showing up and, and loving first and giving the samples and praying over your samples, you guys look at this. This is, this is what I did today. I, every single one of these packages I prayed over and I didn't pray that they would become a customer. I prayed that this product would transform their life. That's what I prayed for because whether you buy product from me or not, I don't care. I want you to experience what I've experienced because we have a powerhouse product that is meant to change lives, right? But you wouldn't know that if you're looking at every person as a sale. And if you're saying my team, if they just, if my team just did this, I would make this much. If my team just showed up this way, I would have this. If I, if they just did this, then I would have that. If this person just enrolled, then I would be this. You guys, there, this isn't a cause and effect. This is a, who can I help? Who can I transform? Who can I offer hope to? How can I be of service? How can I love you deeper? How can I love you harder? How can I help heal you in the process heals myself? How can I, how can I teach the world that it's okay to go through some things and overcome them? How can you be a victor and not a victim? How can you teach that to people? So my, my thing for you tonight is that you are enough. Every action you take is enough if you do it the right way. If you do it with heart and you do it with passion and you do it with the desire to serve someone else, it's enough. If you can only work your business for 15 minutes a day, please stop comparing yourself to somebody who can work their business eight hours a day because what you're doing is enough. If you are working your business eight hours a day, and, and you're looking at someone in like Melissa's shoes or Carly's shoes, you guys, you are still enough. You will be in their position one day when you continue to do what you're doing. I promise you that. Because when you serve first, you give more. I, I always say your giving hand has to be bigger than your receiving hand. You will always be paid tenfold. But you have to believe that your actions are enough. And that your giving, your action, your love, your gratitude, all of that is going to come together full circle to help break pain, to help you heal, to help you break those generational curses, to help you dream bigger than you ever thought you could dream. Like maybe $50,000 isn't enough for what God has planned for me. And that's why I'm not having that come into my heart yet. I will cross every single one of those things off on my vision board right here though. I don't know if y'all can see that because you guys, guess what? Those are things that have been placed on my heart and I know that they're from God. I know that those things matter to me and I know that he put them there for a reason, but a bigger dream I don't have and I'm not afraid to admit that. That doesn't mean that I'm not going to serve. That doesn't mean I have expectations from my team. I really try to meet my team where they're at. And if I ever don't do that, y'all are welcome to call me out. Because this journey isn't about me. It's about serving. And the second that you make it about you, you fall into the trap of negativity. You fall into the trap of comparitis. You fall into the trap of anxiousness and frustrations. You fall into the trap of not growing. And then you begin to blame other people. You begin to blame the company. You begin to blame the products. Really, when all you had to do was step out of that and serve. So my goal for you guys tonight is just to take everything that everybody's saying and know that do not operate in fear. Sarah, that's one of the biggest things that I took from you tonight is that the fear is the death, death of the destiny, of your destiny. And dri driven 
When you're driven, you're in control. When you're pulled, you're out of control. When you're out of control, your business is never going to grow because out of control means you're not serving. When you're driving your ship, you're serving. And from Anna and from Tina, you guys, I don't, I mean, I have notes galore. Like just know that you're enough. Know that when you're on coffee chat, when you're on leadership chats, when you're watching other people's lives, when you hear people be like, my team had 78 welcome calls today and 45 people signed up in five seconds. And you're sitting here being like, I haven't enrolled anybody in like two months. Like, how do you get 75,000 people on your team in 1.2 seconds? And I'm over here like planting all the seeds and I've got nothing. You guys, those seeds that you're planting aren't seeds, they're people. And they deserve to be watered with love. They deserve to be cared after. They deserve to have the sunlight. They deserve to have you show up all the time as a friend first, right? Because that's what they need. And so just remember that there's 70 billion people in 1.5 seconds already had all of that. They had the sunlight, they had the watering, they had all the things that needed to nourish the seed. And it's our job to know that seed planting is part of the process. And it doesn't always feel good because when you're watching other people harvest and you're like, um, okay, God, hey, hey, I'm ready for that harvest to show up anytime. I'm here waiting. I'm just going to keep, you know, doing the 20 point rule and maybe in about five minutes, somebody's going to buy a dose product for me. That's fine. So it's, one is better than none, right? I mean, do y'all go through that where you're just like, on coffee chat, sometimes people are like, I signed up 25 people. I want to welcome them all. They're all here. And I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> okay, cool. Like, you guys, we're human. But just know that seed planting is part of the process. And that is enough. That is enough. That is enough. You are enough. You are enough. And the only way to grow is to know that your actions are enough and that you are worthy of more. But the only way to get more is if you do the actions to know you're enough and that more is always coming. So I love you guys. I'm grateful to be here. Um, I had a huge revelation tonight. So thank you ladies for just speaking life into my bones. Um, I needed it more than you know. I'm honored to be here with you guys. Love yourself because you can't give anything from an empty cup. And we sell cups that are full of happiness. So drink your happiness and love yourself so that you can love on other people and make them happy. But you guys, truthfully, stop looking left. Stop looking right. Look straight. The path is narrow when you are doing the right things. And it doesn't always feel good but a narrow path is worthy of a good service. And that's your job, is to service your narrow path. And one day that path is gonna explode and you're not even gonna recognize the path anymore because you're gonna be like, look at all these seeds. My, the sides of my road are so full of trees and flowers that I literally can't see anything else. So go and love yourself, love your people, love hard, do the thing, show up, don't be afraid to share, use the script, jump on coffee chat. And if it makes you angry, talk to yourself and be like, you know what, self, get over it. I needed it, right? Don't, don't entertain your ego like, like Anna said, but do the things one or two consistently every day, form good habits and just, you know, just know you're enough. That's all I have. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I'm like, I'm wishing I took notes. I'm going to definitely be listening to this replay. That was amazing, Bobby Joe. Truly amazing. Um, I love, like, I always use the seed analogy, but what you said, those seeds are people that deserve to be watered and deserve the sunlight. They deserve to be loved. Oh my gosh, what a revelation. Like, you guys, truly amazing because what these women are talking about is the breakthrough that they are having in their mindset. And here's the thing. I'm just going to speak to all you. I've got 30 seconds left, guys, and we're done. But I just want to say to all of you, um, your breakthrough, I'm speaking to every single one of you, your breakthrough is coming. And so often before your breakthrough in the business can come, you need that breakthrough right here. And that's what these women are talking about, is they're truly talking about the way that their hearts, their minds are being transformed, which is going to open up the door for the breakthrough that is coming as we enter into 2020 and big things are ahead.
because I am so excited for each and every one of you. And I just cannot wait to see all of you just grow and bloom over 2020. And then I have one last thing. Okay, you guys, this is kind of funny. But um, we are going to talk about, well, so don't get mad at me. We're going to talk about version two one more time. This is going to be the last time we talk about it. You ready? We're going to dig that hole. Guys, we're going to bury that sucker. You ready? I'm going to tell you a story. And then we're going to put the dirt on that. We're going to stomp it. We're going to be like, good riddance. Like, we're moving on. They're like, we're not going to mention it again. Because like these ladies said, it's not that version that's going to be whether or not we move ahead. Right, you guys? Like, we are going to do amazing things here. So listen to the story. And then you guys, we're going to take that shovel, heap the dirt on it, and say good riddance to that once and for all. So back when we had that B2 issue, um, I had this lady who reached out to me and she's like, well, you know, she was in, in your cup of happy. And she's like, you know, I, I, I got the B2. I'm not liking the way it tastes. Um, I'm just not feeling good on it. And, you know, so she was just kind of complaining about it. I was like, okay, you know, let me help you get a new version. Right. So, um, I reached out to a rep and I'm like, Hey, can you help me get this girl? You know, she's just had a really bad experience with B2. Um, you know, and meanwhile, this girl, as I'm, you know, kind of getting this, you know, I sent an email and everything as I'm waiting for that response, this girl's like, Oh, I just got my new shipment. It's the B3. It's so great. I feel amazing. I'm like, Oh, I'm so glad. Right. So then the next day I get an email back from the rep and the rep goes, well, I can't really send her a different version because she's in Canada. Their version never changed. You guys, it was in her head. She had heard the negativity from other people and had it in her head. She was on the same flip version the whole time. Nothing changed, just her mindset. I want you guys to get that through your head because it's really powerful. So the energy that we're putting out in our belief has so much effect over how people think. What are you putting out there? Are you putting out positivity and belief or are you have, did somebody say something negative and you're allowing their one sour seed to taint everything you think? right? And I'm going to tell you right now, half the time it's BS. <laughs> it totally is. So in case you guys ready, we're going to take the shovel, throw it on that. We're done. That's over because we are walking like Tina said at the beginning of this, the past is behind us. We are walking out on what we have in the future. Yeah. That's all I got. Melissa, I'll pass it over to you. Love all you. Thank you so much for allowing us to speak tonight. Oh my gosh. Are you guys serious right now? Are you guys chills on chills on chills tears in my eyes you guys really touched my heart in so many ways i have been reading the comments everybody is feeling it on i'm seeing it in messenger i'm seeing it here you guys thank you so much for pouring into us and you know what beyond everything thank you for being brave enough to be transparent thank you for being brave enough to share where your heart's really at you know not the the version for facebook or the pressure of what you feel like you're supposed to say right like Thank you for showing up as you and with your true story, because that's the stuff that we need to hear. It touched me. I know it touched a lot of people. You guys, final thought, we all are, and we're all created for a bigger purpose, right? Like we're, we're not here to just, you know, go to work, wash some dishes, get through life and, you know, do the daily tasks, the mundane tasks of our lives. Like that's not why we're here. We're here for a bigger purpose, whether, you know, that's this and this is the thing that leads you to the bigger thing for your life, or it's not, you have to start manifesting the life that you want in the way of, you know, there is abundance. I'm going to speak life over myself. I'm going to walk out my purpose. I'm not going to hold myself back anymore. I'm not going to think small anymore. You know, you have to decide that that's what you want for yourself. You guys, for a lot of years, I felt like I was at the start line of a race. And I just watched everybody race by and race by and race by. And I would stand, you know, I, I literally, I would have dreams of this. I had a vision that I was at the start line of a race. And I was miserable because I was watching other people walk out in their purpose. And I was just stuck. And I was watching it. I was stuck with my own excuses. I was stuck with negativity. I was stuck with letting the people pleasing hold me back, guys. And that was some of the darkest years of my life. And I did it for a lot of years. I know that I was meant to go through that because it allows me to speak life into other people because I've been there, right? That was a part of why we're here now. It was a part of where this journey has led me to now. But you know what changed, you guys? Is that when I decided that it was my go time, it was go time. All it was was a decision. It was a decision to drown out the noise, to let go of the negativity, to let go of, you know, 
the ceiling I had placed on my life. You guys, we all have a ceiling and it all lives at different levels for each of us. You know, your ceiling is created from your childhood. Your ceiling is created from different experiences in your life where people told you, told you you're not worthy. You're not good enough. You're never going to amount to whatever it is, right? Whatever. I mean, it could be from elementary school. Okay. Like we all have a ceiling, but it's up to us to decide whether we let that ceiling stay there or we remove it. That's it. And it doesn't have to be, you know, like these ladies shared, it doesn't have to be some crazy dream, right? All it is is one foot in front of the other and you figure it out along the way. Like that's it. So guys, speak life into yourself. Speak life into your future. Speak life into your business. Speak life into the people around you. And you know, everything will change. So thank you so much, ladies. Like holy moly, there are other words I could be saying right now, but like seriously, you guys touched my life. Thank you so much for pouring into all of us. We love you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is gonna be a recording to remember. Thank you so much. Love you guys. Have a wonderful evening. I'm gonna unmute everybody. Okay, let's see here. Everybody's unmuted. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you guys. Good night. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye guys. Have a good night. Yeah, you said bye. Bye.